Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. I am back with some more botanical resin, but this time we are using the cling film technique to finish them off and we are using some chameleon powder. I am head over heels in love with the results. Let's go. So I am starting in exactly the same way as I started in the last video and that is to add tattoos into the mold first. Now again you don't have to do this, you can do this afterwards but these are all the elements I'm using today and I've decided to use some pink rose petals that I got from Polly's Petals. I will tag her down below, I bought them like a year ago, um, she's also on Instagram. So they're gorgeous petals and they are, they are real, they're just dried rose petals and they work so beautifully in resin and I figured they're also botanical right, they're, they're kind of going along them lines so I thought yeah we'll add a bit of pink and we'll see how it turns out. So you would have seen me do this in the last video. So all I'm going to do, if you are new here, I am putting temporary tattoos in my silicone molds. The epoxy resin picks them up beautifully, just as it would not, well, the resin doesn't pick it up on your skin, but you apply the tattoos exactly as you would if you were applying them to your own skin. So you just take them out, you take off the cellophane protective clear um, cover, and then you turn them upside down and you put them into your silicon molds. Then what you want to do is make sure you wet the backs thoroughly so that all of that tattoo peels off. And you will see here, it really does matter that you wet them thoroughly. You don't want to pour the water on, but make sure your cloth is really, really wet when you are applying the tattoos. Because when it came to peeling off, you will see, oh, I took some tattoo off, but it's all good it really didn't take away from the um, final result. So we're all good here, we're all good here. So here you see me, I've got a really wet cloth and I am just dabbing the backs, like I said, exactly the same way you would if you were putting it on your arm. And yeah, I just make sure that all of the edges, well clearly, I didn't make sure enough because I do end up ripping one of these tattoos, which was such a shame. And actually the end result is quite funny when it comes to the tattoos. So yeah, really interesting result for me. But here you see me, just doing this and then it's time to peel them off. I tend to slide mine off like I said in the last video but again you can pull them off any way you want to pull them off. But you see here, I don't know if it's this one, yeah look at that, what? I mean honestly when you think you've wet it enough don't, go back and what would have happened there is the edge would have been overlying the lip and I wouldn't have wet that enough in order to release the tattoo. So, you know, it's just all lessons learned and if I can help you in any way, then I absolutely will. But this one came off an absolute dream and I love it. It did have undertones of blue. You can see here, I'm trying to get it in the light. Wasn't expecting that. I didn't really see it. My eyes didn't pick it up. But here we are. Instead of adding foil in clear resin like I've done in the last video, in this video, I decided to add foil directly to the silicone trays. Now, again, you can add the tattoos to your silicone or you can add your tattoos after demold. But the one thing to remember is these will need to be sealed that you can't you can't then go on to use the tray unless you seal them in with a top coat of resin either way. Whichever way you put the tattoos in, they need sealing. They do come out sticky at the end. So yeah, that is something to bear in mind if you are going to do this technique. So I did end up using quite a bit of foil with with no real rhyme or reason. Again, one of these shove it all in techniques. Just put it where you want it. See what it looks like because... I realised at this point, whatever I do, not whatever I do is going to come out pretty, not at all. Whatever I do here with this shove it all in technique, it's going to look quite amazing because I don't know why, but it is working and that is why I didn't really put too much thought into where I was putting the gold foil. One thing to say, we're four minutes in. If you are still here, I would really massively appreciate if you could give this video a thumbs up up. So the reason we ask for thumbs up is so that YouTube know that you like this content and that you like my video. What that will do is YouTube will then push my video out for more people to see that don't usually see my content and it just really helps my channel grow. So for example on the last video 
it did really, really well. So many of you in the live chat was incredible. Over 70 of you joined the live chat, which was wow for me. Never had that many on my own videos. And yeah, I really appreciated it. And then the views were really amazing too. And because the video only had 200 likes, um, it kind of stopped growing. It, it went really crazy overnight, but then it really slowed down because YouTube is like, oh, well, no one's really liking the video, so therefore we'll just stop it here. I hope this is making sense for you, and I really do appreciate even those 200 likes. I uh, massively appreciate. So, yeah, if you could give this video a thumbs up as well, because quite honestly... <laughs> I love this more than I love this more than Saturdays. I don't know if I'm fickle or if I just move on really quick, but on Saturday I was saying like this is my the best resin that I've ever done and it was at the time until this one came along. So yeah, really 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 would appreciate that thumbs up. The resin I'm using in this video and throughout the whole video is Vista Turbo purely because it cures in five hours and it allows me to get so much done in one day which is what I am loving about this resin. I've I bought some about three weeks ago and I've well two weeks ago and I've already used half I've already used half of it so yeah anyway here we are with the leaves now I did buy these leaves off Amazon and I have linked everything below so down below in my Amazon storefront I have a whole botanical page now so everything I'm using in these in these botanical videos is going to be linked in one place the one thing about this leaf you'll see here in a second it fell apart I was being way too rough with it really I should have just laid it down and been a lot more gentle but it just, yeah, you can see right here it fell apart. And as much as I was telling myself, it's okay, it's okay. Just just leave it, it's going to turn out okay. I couldn't, I couldn't leave it. It was bugging me how many, how many extra leaves there were. So any second now you're going to see me kind of just give up and just scoop it back out because I was not happy and I realised I'd been way too rough with it and I needed to just just take a moment and reflect on what I'd done wrong. You see me removing the leaf completely. So at this stage, we've laid down our temporary tattoos. We've added some foil to the silicon molds and the foil is static, so it sticks really nicely to the silicon. You don't need glue. You don't need to stick it down with anything. And now we're just laying down some leaves into a very thin layer of clear resin. These are the steps. These are the process these are the processes of how I achieved the look that I achieved. I'm not touching that leaf now. So you would have seen me just lay that leaf down and it's like, I'm not touching you again because I don't want that to happen. I only had two of those leaves and they were my favourites. So I didn't want to mess it up. So here you see me just spreading out that clear resin onto the other silicon trays and laying down my leaves where I want my leaves to be. Again, it it really wasn't, I didn't pay much mind to the positioning, to the placement. I just knew that I wanted depth. I wanted more than one leaf. And yeah, I wanted to be able to see all of this depth when we turn the trays out. And there you have it. My vocabulary, guys. I need longer words. <laughs> I need longer descriptive words. This fern leaf is also one of my favourite leaves. And the reason, if you are new here, the reason we're just laying them down in a thin coat of resin is because at this point, I need them to cure there. I need them to cure in the clear so that when we fill the trays up, nothing is going to creep underneath those leaves and kind of take away from the finish. But here you see me just adding as much as I can. I do want clear spaces. The key to this video was making sure that there were clear spaces because that cling film technique can only be seen from the ups from the outside inside outside backside the under yeah it could oh my gosh guys okay so the cling film technique can only be seen when we flip it out and it can only be seen if there are clear spaces does that make sense so if i if i if i put too much in these molds at this point the cling film's not going to have any impact whatsoever because it just won't be seen. That is where I was going with this. <laughs> I hope you're following me so far. So at this point, I decided I was happy with all of the leaf placements and now it was time to fill the edges. 
before I filled the edges, I actually did lay down some pink rose petals in some more gaps. Again, conscious that I didn't want to completely cover up those gaps, but I wanted to lay down some pink rose petals so that we'd see that pop of colour on the other side as well. And I am telling you now, that was the best decision I made in this entire video, and you will see why at the end. The actual, the detail it adds, the depth it adds to the finished result was unbelievable. Just by adding a few little pink petals into that clear resin, massive win-win. I will definitely be doing this again. And even just doing this video, seeing the end results, I want to do more now, but I'm not going to use tattoos again. I think I've done the tattoos, but the next time I really want to go in with the leaves and the rose petals because wow. And yeah, you'll see what I mean with the finished results. The tattoos didn't add much to this one. So it's now time to fill the rims with resin. Again, I don't want any resin, any colored resin to come up and over the surface. I don't want them to take away any more of my clear spots. I've got enough clear spots that I'm happy with. So I make sure that I'm not coating the top. I'm just trying to get some down inside those rims. Now this is clear resin packed full of those dried rose petals from Polly's Petals. I figured they would add some beautiful detail around the rims of the trays. And yeah, the trick here was making sure that not too many air bubbles got trapped in those in those petals. So I really did wedge them down and then I poured here, you can see I poured a little bit more clear over the top just to make sure that yeah, there was less air bubbles because they are notorious for trapping air in amongst them. And then once you've poured them in, getting the air out is a little bit tricky. So that is what I did. I just put some rose petals at the tops and the bottoms of the trays. And then with the rest of the rim, I filled it up with the pink mica powder that you would have seen in Saturday's video. And here it is. I am trying to be very careful just to pour it around the rim so that it just meets up and gathers with those rose petals. So you've got clear with rose petals, then you've got a bit of pink, then you've got the rose petals, then you've got a bit of pink. Again, we don't know how this is gonna turn out because this is all very much go with the flow and letting yourself be free to do, just, just free to create, free to do whatever you wanna do on the day. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know if you can tell the excitement in my voice and just, how I just feel like I've created something. Do you ever create something and then just go like, oh, did I, oh, I made, I made that? Like, yeah, it was a bit of a shock to me. Again, yeah, this is all we're going to do. I did end up, as you can see here, adding a little bit of pink on the back of that rose. I would not do that again in hindsight, but we are done. It is time to let these fully cure and come back the next day. I think it was the next day or about five hours later to add the cling film. Now I did use my heat gun, you would have seen, just before I cut that clip out, I did use my heat gun and I did use my heat gun for around about five minutes to make sure those edges were really, really warm and no air could get in. So here we are, we're back, we're using turbo again. And now I'm filling up the molds. So everything is now cured on that flat, on the flat, everything is cured. So now I'm filling up the mold, leaving around about two millimeter gap at the top so that I can add my cling film. Now everyone knows it as the cling film technique, but I don't actually use cling film. That was a nightmare, absolute nightmare. Like, I don't know if you saw my cling film video, it was a nightmare for me. I won't ever use it again. I am using polyurethane drop sheet. It's a painter's drop sheet from the DIY shop. I got it from b and Q, but I've also got two packets from the pound shop. So your local pound shop usually has like a little DIY section. You can get really decent polyurethane. So resin and poly, they do not stick together. Completely different substance to cling film. Here you see me just laying down the polyurethane and going slowly. I'm trying to let the resin take the polyurethane sheet, just naturally take it bit by bit to to prevent any air bubbles getting trapped underneath 
And honestly, I wasn't bothered about air bubbles. I think I'm the only resin artist who's not bothered about air bubbles. Depend, really depending on what I'm making, to be fair. If I was making absolutely crystal clear resin, then yes, I would be bothered. But here you see me just tapping gently. The other end I'm holding up with my hand. And then my other hand is just gently easing the polyurethane sheet into the resin as we go. Just to avoid as many air bubbles as possible. You'll quite often get them anyway. So this was around about 35 minutes later. Now bear in mind this resin is a quick cure. This is off and gone solid in five hours. You haven't got time to leave it too long. But what I have learned is the longer you leave it before you come in and pinch, the, the better the results, the better that the pinch will stay there. The downside to using polyurethane drop sheet is it's heavier it's much heavier in weight than cling film so it had a tendency here the one on the left you can see I've pinched it in but then it's saying no I'm, I'm good thanks I'm just gonna go back to where I was so <laughs> there is definitely with the polyurethane I feel like you have to be persistent with it so I kind of babysat it for around about an hour and every 10 minutes I was coming back in with the pinches it's not like cling film when you pinch you can walk away knowing that those pinches are gonna stay there with the polyurethane it had a tendency to want to go back to its original form which was the flat but honestly perseverance was key with this as you can see here i'm just grabbing pinching prodding and poking to get some texture to get that silk satin sheet effect and here you can see this is about after one hour it started to stay in place. It wasn't moving anymore. And this is when I knew I'd got it. So next day, I made a huge mess with all of that pulling and pushing and pro po poking, poking and prodding. I did push out some resin over the edges. Not ideal, but it does happen. And I knew I had a clean up job on my hands to get rid of this excess resin. I didn't want to pour the final back you know without cleaning up those edges so here you see look at this watch how easy this comes off wow that is a wow that is polyurethane drop sheet if you've tried cling film you will know the difference you will see the difference visibly it is a dream to pull off here we go straight off reusable over and over and over again now the one on the left i will say that was the stubborn one. That was the one that didn't want to stay in the pinched position. So all you see me doing here is tidying up those edges by pushing the resin back in towards the center of the tray. And it came, it, yeah, it came off pretty much like a dream. But I do know that I will have some, some cleanup at the end because there are some bits that are slightly higher than the mold. But here you see me pulling them away pushing them all in towards the center of the tray and that is how I cleaned up that mess again depending on how thick the resin was I was thinking I might need scissors but I didn't so let's resin chameleon powders in gold I chose gold because when I did a swatch of it it was green I didn't see any gold and I thought well listen I'm using gold foil I'm using green botanical feels you know and yeah that is why I decided to use this colour and I'm telling you it paid off. So what you want to do is when your cling film and your resin has cured, I left it 24 hours before I came in and peeled back that cling film, the, the polyurethane, easier to say cling film. 24 hours later when it's fully cured, peeled it off, then you want to lightly coat it in mica, so um, chameleon powder. If you've never done this before, it does look like it's not doing much. It looks like it's not really going on. If you've tried it, you you might re you might know this feeling that I'm talking about. In the video as well, you can still see through it, and you think, is that even is that on there? I'm brushing it all over. It doesn't really look like it's on there. It looks like I can still see through, therefore this is not going to work. But you have to trust the process on this one. You have to trust it. It is on there. It's on there. As long as you know that you've covered every single, every single millimetre of that tray, then you have to trust the process, trust the chameleon powder. It is on there. Okay, you've done it right. There's nothing wrong. 
Um, and yeah, that is the advice I can give you if you've not tried this technique, because you might try it and be like, well, that's not, that's not right. It's clear. I can still see through it. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. It's the way it's kind of meant to be. But here we are. You just see me coating every last little bit. You can still clearly see the leaves. But oh, the magic happens when we add a black background. Okay, now I am using resin 8 black opaque pigment in resin and we are just filling in the back and I'm just going to fill this up until the edge of the mold is completely filled up to the top this is where it gets messy but anyway it's it, it was mess to clean up after not mess in the actual video but that is it that is all we have to do for this technique and I just keep going until the whole mold is filled I didn't actually film me filling all three because I feel like this video is long enough as is. We are already 20 minutes in, which is the longest video I have done in a very long time. That is it. All three were done. And now it's a case of coming back next day to demold. And oh, guys, I hope you are as excited as I am. I had no idea at this point what they were going to look like. But look at this mess look at these edges and I hate I hate the aftermath I hate having to clean up my edges but here we go first one are you ready oh my gosh I couldn't even cope with how beautiful these were oh, just look at this look at that silk satin sheet underneath I couldn't cope I had to put it down and obviously this is voiceover Claire because my screams in real time sometimes are too much for the microphone. <laughs> I was in love, head over heels in love, and you can see stones in there. Now, I did forget to mention in the video that I added stones into the clear section. It would have been in the video, but I forgot to do the whole voiceover part. But look at this. Oh, my gosh. I didn't know. I don't know. Did I? I didn't know what to expect because, again, this isn't the sort of thing you practice. Look at these petals. Look at these petals. Did that not pay off? That paid off. The contrast between the petals, the grey stones almost look dark grey blue in this. And that mica powder. What? Like, where is the gold? That's the beauty of this. I really wanted a true green behind because I figured it would really make everything pop. And I used the gold thinking, well, that has that has a green undertone. Look at this. It paid off. The one thing I would say, what is that tattoo? What is what even is that? I the tattoos got lost in this project and that's absolutely fine. Again, it's just there. It doesn't it doesn't make it look ugly, but I can't, I could not cope with this beauty. The edges with those petals, I, oh my goodness me. This is the tray. This is the tray that I put very few petals in immediate regret. And you can see why now. It kind of all blends in together. It's greens upon greens upon greens. And I think those petals really would have made it pop. It really would have given some definition between the leaves, the stones, those silk sheets. Look at these. Oh my gosh. Probably the best cling film technique I have ever achieved. And that is because of the polyurethane drop cloth. Cling film and me, we're not friends. We are not friends. I adore it. Even that tattoo, I'm loving it. You can see in, it's really hard to pick up on camera, but the naked eye can see the satin sheets underneath. This one, stop it now. My favourite. Hands down, my absolute favourite out of the three. And I'm sorry, these have sold already. I've got one left, but two of these have already sold from my Instagram, including this one. Look at that leaf. Does that not scream tropical jungle to you with the petals? This has now made me want to do tropical jungle trays. <laughs> surprise, surprise. My brain, honestly, I don't stay long on one thing, but it's all the same technique. Nevertheless, it's just, yeah. Again, that tattoo got lost. <laughs> Can you see? that tattoo they look kind of funny in there which is why next time I'm not going to use tattoos I'm obsessed with this tray obsessed those pink petals they brought them to life completely so here you see them 
I still need to top coat to seal those tattoos. Do not forget, you need to top coat to seal those tattoos. And I'm not going to show you that in this video because this video is long enough. I showed you in the last video. Here they are, top coated. Absolute dream. The shine, <laughs> the shine is a wow. It actually makes the features of everything in the tray stand out more. Everything pops. And I wish you could see what I could see. And I'm hoping my camera, because I still use my phone, guys. I'm hoping my camera can pick up the quilted detail underneath. This is what is blowing me away. Ah, uh, calm down, Claire. Drink a cup of tea. I'm going to need a cup of tea after this voiceover, okay? This is why I like to do voiceovers very soon after I see the finish because the excitement deteriorates over time. But honestly, I have to voiceover and, yeah, straight away so that that excitement is real that I'm sharing with you right now. But this is the one that I found just the, the least um, depth because I didn't put those petals in, but you can still see the quilt under there. You can see the stones. Those stones as well, I feel like they are needed. They are needed to create this wow. Tell me which one is your favourite right now. The one on the right. And please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really matters to me, guys. It matters to YouTube. It helps them understand that you like what you see. And yeah let me know your favorite so as i was saying before my thumbs up the one on the right is definitely my favorite because that leaf is that leaf gives me tropical jungle vibes now i want to do one with tropical jungle leaves rose petals stones and tropical tattoos how cool would it be to have a parrot flying into shot right now that is what I want to do. I really need to get back on Amazon and search for some tropical tattoos. Or if anyone out there creates vellums, creates vellums for resin and can do me some tropical birds, please. I need some parrots flying into shot over that quilted background. I think it would be beyond stunning, beyond stunning. This is the longest video I've done to date. So if you are still here after 26 minutes, I I cannot thank you enough. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. But most importantly, please come comment down below. Let me know which one is your favourite. Is it this one with the tropical leaf and the rose petals? Is this middle one with the most quilt that you see? Or is it this end one that has subtle undertones of that quilt? Oh my gosh. Cannot. Yeah. I cannot get over this. I love you all. Thank you so much. I will see you all in the next video, which will be Wednesday, where I am putting pampas grass into resin. I'm going to try it out, see what it's like, and I hope you all love it. I'll see you all then. Oh my gosh, how long has this video been? Ah, appreciate you all. Bye.